Our next guest is the life of the party. Please welcome back real estate expert Nicole Hazelton and her special guest, Walid Ramaya, the CEO of Realster. Welcome back to Life of the Party. She's here. <laughs> Thanks. Nicole, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, Thanks great for having to see us. you. Yes, this is awesome. We'll lead also welcome to the program. Thank you. I've been hearing about Realster for a long time. I don't know much about it, but Nicole, obviously this is something that you thought was a big deal. You wanted to bring Waleed on today. Tell us why. I did, because there's so many search engines out there for property buyers, and um, you know, as a listing agent, you work really hard for your listings, and I really like this product. I use it myself for my listings, and to just allow my buyers to search for properties online. So I think it's good to just let the general public know what's out there, aside from the, the larger property search sites. We can use the names. Zillow, Redfin, <laughs> okay, they're all out there. Well, tell me, I, I use Redfin. Tell me why I should use Realster. Yeah. Realster is a new platform that I wanted to create because we there's a big problem in the industry. There's over a million agents underrepresented on the big platforms like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, where they have to pay a lot of money and uh, they cannot be in their own zip codes. So we believe mm. the agent should be the true local expert. So when you search in an area as a consumer, that agent who knows the area should show up on the map and help you either find a home to buy or sell. What do you mean by underrepresented? Uh, well, there is over a million, uh, 1.1 mem million members of the National Association of Realtors. There's another million member uh, uh, licensed agents and brokers there are not members of the NAR, so there's over two million professionals out in the United States, but only about 100,000 agents are on the top platforms like that you, we all know, like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. Redfin, by the way, is a brokerage, so we can p add that to the mix. So there's a million nine agents that are really not on these, any of these platforms, either because the zip codes are closed up, because they only allow so many, and then they lock it up, and then the, uh, and also because the price is too high, uh, they have to pay five, six hundred, maybe up to a thousand bucks a month to just to get leads. So they're they are really just lead gen sites, and we think no, it should be open. So every agent should be there, but the consumer should also benefit by finding the correct agent. So for example, Nicole knows Little Italy well; she should show up in Little Italy, not in Escondido. Mm. Right, I mean, it's expensive to advertise via these sites. So I used to say, you know, my listings are being held hostage by these big search conglomerates because you have to pay to have your, your information on your listing as the listing agent. So even if you're not a participating member of Realster as a listing agent, your contact information is on your listing, ah. which is something that I... I'm, I get it now. I yes. can attest to. Um, and then if you are a paid member, it's, you know, it's a very low fee. I think it's $40 it's a month. It's $40 a month, yes. yes. Yeah, yes. so if you're searching for my listings, in downtown, my face will pop up on my listings if I'm paying for the site as an advertiser. And then you'll see blog posts that I that I write. They might be geotagged to where I wrote them at. So you can see that you're actually working with the local expert in that area. They know, you know, the restaurants, they know the nightlife, they have the listings. Um, and then when when a client actually selects an agent to work with, that agent shows up on all of the listings. Yeah, correct, so. exactly. So, so we only give attribution to the listing agent. We do not believe in sharing your listing with three other people, agents. We don't believe like if you list a property, you should have three other signs outside your own listing on the street. That's basically the model that the other portals have. <laughs> Imagine that. It's, it's so true. true. It's true. That's exactly what it is. It's the digital form of that. It's the digital form of that. Exactly. <laughs> I, th I think that's a broken model. And, and those models did a good job to bring us to this point. So we can't beat them up. They're really done a great job. But that's really a, a dated model. It's been 10, 15 years old. And it's time for some innovation in the industry. So one of the big knocks on Zillow is inaccuracy. Uh, which is something that has been, you know, you know, the information, if you go and you look there, a lot of times you find homes that sold two years ago or whatever it may be. How do you make sure that that doesn't happen uh, for Realster? Yeah. Well, first we get direct feeds from uh, an aggregator that we get for, for the whole country. So we have about 1.6 million listings. And these uh, listings are updated every 12 to 24 hours. And also in certain marketplaces like San Diego, we are actually starting to get direct IDX feeds through participating brokers. Okay, you are. So, th and I think that's really the key, because at the end of the day, 
I mean, I think Zillow has a terrible reputation. I don't know why people use it, honestly. I mean, I know the Zestimate is something that people want to go there for automated valuation models, see, oh, what is my house worth? But we know that it's not right. Well, especially in places like downtown. I mean, you're, you're not comparing apples to apples. You can be comparing a luxury building with a low-rise building, and they're just not the same. So yeah, those square feet matter yeah. where they are located. <laughs> right. So I heard a statistic one time that they were, you know, 20 percent inaccurate sixty percent of the time. <laughs> that's, that's a big percentage. <laughs> Do we add those together? How does the math work on that? <laughs> What's the order of operations for something like that? Um, so uh, try before you buy is something that I know is sort of your you're the brainchild behind that. And for me, I'm trying to think about it logistically and I'm thinking this sounds this seems like there's no way that this could work. So tell me about how does Try Before You Buy work, and is it actually working? Yeah, okay, so uh, TBYB, which is our trade name, TBYB, is, is really, think of it as a tool that you put in your tool chest. It's needed when someone, say, is on the fence about buying a home, that, let's say they're looking for three properties, and they're not sure, but they need to stay in, in the home or visit it again. You've, we've all had this as professionals. We've had this client says, can I go back again? Can I go back again? Because they're not sure about this. Sometimes the best thing is just to go there and actually stay in the property. And it is our most expensive purchase for most of our, most people, that's a big investment to buy a home. Why not stay in it and, and try it? You know, we try our cars, we try our shoes, and, uh, and, w and sometimes it takes, some people it takes them an hour to decide on a shoe, but 10 minutes to decide on a house. So <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so why not do it for, for a home? We do not think it applies to all situations. Of course, in a very hot market, you're going to have multiple offers. That's not a, 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 normally not an option. But really think of it as a tool that you would deploy as you need it. So what we decided to do, we put a TBYB button on every listing on one, uh, that we have, 1.6 million listings. You can go there and you can press the button. The request goes to the seller. The seller decides if they say yes or no. And if they say yes, they will set up their price per night. We have a full, robust system behind it. We have insurance, we have terms and conditions, uh, all the issues about damage and all of that. So think of it right now as a vacation rental site mm -hmm. married to uh, a for sale listing. So mm -hmm. I was thinking just like an Airbnb, you're just airbnb it essentially yeah. for someone who might want to buy the place. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, air, you're basically doing an Airbnb for the actual listing. So when you go to Airbnb or HomeAway or VRBO or Flipkey, these homes are vacation rentals, but you really don't know if they're for sale or not. This is actually, you're there to try Experience. the actual home to buy it. So mm -hmm. we're upfront. This is, you're really doing it to try the home in order to decide if you want to do it or not. So there's a lot of arguments for and against. I would recommend you go to realster.com. We have a very robust FAQ section. Explains if you're a buyer, if you're a seller, if you're an agent, and answers most of the questions that we typically get. No, I just saw a CarMax came out and said, you can buy any car you buy from us, you have five days to bring it back and get a full refund. So I think this idea is more and more appealing uh, to people out there. By the way, we've promoted a lot of big brands. Uh, <laughs> <it's like laughs> publicity. We're here to talk about Realster, yes. <laughs> by the way. Um, but uh, the, I saw that and I thought, man, that's a really good idea, especially with cars. Because it's tough to know how a car is going to drive in your routine until you go through your routine. Same thing with houses. How is it going to play out in your routine of like getting up, driving to work? What is the traffic like during that time of the day? When you come home, where is the sun setting? Where is the light in the house? Those are things you just don't find out usually until you move in. Now you're six, seven hundred thousand dollars into a place, committed, <laughs> and you're there. You've got a thirty-year mortgage, and now you find out that the light hits in a weird angle, and you have to buy some curtains, and that view you thought you were going to get at night doesn't work, or whatever it may be. So I love the idea. I just wondered about the execution, but now that you've put it in terms of it's just an Airbnb, essentially, of a home that's for sale, I think the next buyer's market, that's going to be a really hot deal. Yeah. Well, and the beautiful thing is it's not a vacation rental, so you can probably get around those pesky HOA guidelines, Correctly. especially in places like downtown. So. Yeah, that's Good a work. great point. Mm -hmm. Fantastic stuff. Anything else we should know about Real Star League? Uh, just we are based in San Diego, so we are a software technology company started here. So we're a classic Silicon Val uh, Valley style startup. Uh, uh, so really tech heavy with industry people got together. So we have a very robust team. We have a lot of industry sub support. Some top players in the industry are behind us on our board, on our board of advisors. 
and we're really excited. We just started, we just launched. We have about, uh, agents right now in about 38 uh, states around the country. Our goal will be in all 50 states by the end of this year. And uh, it's just, you know, we're just getting going. Well, I have a feeling you're going to do it. Just have a feeling. Thank you guys <laughs> Thank so much for coming. Really appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. for Check it Thank out. You. Realster. If you're looking for properties online, why not? See if it's better than some of the other sites out there. I think you might be surprised. And stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else. Commercial free.